examiner will obviously immediately ask you, okay, we know there is six year old child. How do you know about the uh, uh, progress of the disease or what you mentioning about the stage of disease? And at that stage, you would uh, like to tell the examiner that uh, this disease is a uh, follow a sequential staging where uh, start with the avascular necrosis with whatever cause at the moment the exact etiology is not known there's a lot of hypothesis uh, there but uh, the ultimate endpoint is the uh, decreased vascular supply of epiphysis leading to necrosis of this uh, uh, epiphysis nucleus and once it is necrosed uh, it is resolved by osteoclast and uh, once it is resolved uh, very similar to creeping uh, substitution. The bone is laid down. Initially, it's a woven bone, and gradually this uh, porous, fluffy bone become organized into uh, uh, normal lamellar bone, and this is how it progresses. And we need to know the progress of disease, uh, uh, how it progress. And as I, uh, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned, I should mention that uh, most of these slides, most of the work, because globally, uh, Benjamin Joseph has done a uh, lot of work on Parthes and he's the global authority on this. So uh, uh, all the slides are his credits or most of slides are his credits are taken from his work. Uh, so this is his uh, slides that whatever uh, causes of uh, vascular insufficiency happens, uh, it lead to, leads to avascular necrosis leading to uh, a necrotic bone to be absorbed by osteoclast. And then there is a collapse on fragmentation of epiphysis, which then leads to uh, uh, bone formation. And this reossification continues. And eventually, there is a healing and remodeling. And this whole uh, process is quite long. And so the disease, uh, disease life history is quite long. Uh, this is not in days or weeks. We're talking about month here. Uh, first stage, maybe anything from six to eight months, second stage again, eight to 12 months, third stage, maybe about uh, two, three years, and then remodeling can continue for years and years. So this is a quite a long drawn uh, process, not a disease, acute disease and finishing. So this is quite long um, uh, pathological process going on. Uh, the examiner at this stage will say that, okay, then what's the problem? You have avascular necrosis and you're saying that uh, the, the epiphases become dead and then bone regrow. Uh, yeah. Even if it takes three to four years, uh, I can't see any uh, problem with this disease. Uh, why do you need to worry about treating it uh, if all the stages are already determined and bone regrow? Um, What's the problem? Obviously, the problem you have to mention that uh, although this bone can grow while it is uh, this this uh, pathological process is going on, this uh, this epiphysis is is, uh, is abnormal and it's uh, although cartilage keep growing but it is not properly supported with this and then if it is not supported, it lead to deformation of head and the main problem is that that while this disease is happening in its uh, uh, anything three to five year, six year cycle, uh, there, uh, there are certain uh, group of patients uh, in which the head is uh, likely to deform and when it is misshapen and deformed, then it's likely to uh, uh, cause abnormal loading and degeneration and problem in future. And the whole aim of Parthes, if you need to, in one one line, is to identify those group of uh, patients in whom the head is likely to uh, deform, and if possible, do some measures to stop that deformation and to stop that disease uh, causing any problem. Obviously, in uh, quite a, f a good number of pa uh, patients uh, in Parthes, luckily, and uh, the cycle exactly follow what we said before and uh, no deformation happen and we 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 happy and patient is happy but you have to uh, on the other hand select that group of patients who can get deformed and if their head get deformed then they can have significant uh, uh, morbidity later on uh, throughout their life so the because of the vascular insufficiency there is synovitis this can lead to the Initial of femoral head getting extrusion from the lateral end of the uh, estabular coverage, 
and this uh, progressive extrusion of femoral head uh, causes abnormal uh, loading and this abnormal loading uh, causes deformation of the head and once the head is deformed acetabular uh, either matches with this or become incongruent so and and that itself will lead to a significant problem of degeneration osteoarthritis and that's that's the whole whole concept of a uh, pathophysiology of uh, of uh, parties to understand that uh, th this deformation has to be uh, protected obviously the examiner will say these are good uh, uh, picture or diagram of uh, histopathology but uh, how do we uh, as a clinician know what is happening on what stays and uh, that is what the uh, examiner wants you to know that radiologically how do you uh, say these stages are happening and fortunately there is a nice correlation of radiology with the histopathological changes going on in the early phase of avascular necrosis there is a condensation phase in, uh, in, in, in where the bone is necrotic bone is being resorbed Osteoclasts are going there, trabecular are falling uh, uh, without support, and that stage is fragmentation stage. And then new bone with creeping substitution is being formed, and that is reossification or healing phase. And uh, obviously, the end stage phase, uh, depending on the shape of the head, uh, how it is remodeled, uh, the end stage will be achieved there. And as I just said, this is a long process uh, can take five to six years uh, but uh, we can we can visualize what is happening histopathologically if you remember the previous slides uh, this is uh, going in a cyclical pattern and this is also going in a cyclical pattern so we can visualize the histopathology of each child at each stage of disease and once you in your mind if you think like that uh, okay these are the x-ray changes this is actually happening in his uh, in his uh, femoral head uh, and and what can i do so that that's 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 your goal as a uh, as a clinician to identify and to see whether you could do anything so uh, exactly as I, as i said those changes are happening uh, initially those stages were described by waldenstrom but um, later on uh, uh, these have been uh, further uh, subdivided into uh, into few more stages. So stages of avascular necrosis, and now we can uh, say that uh, the is two stages. One is where the uh, head is dense but height is maintained, and one B where the height is gone but there is no fragmentation. Then stage of fragmentation can be divided into two A and two B, where two A where just one or two vertical line are there. So the head is being divided into two or three columns. Uh, and, and we'll talk about the uh, column uh, problem later on. Uh, and then stage 2B, there is a multiple uh, fragmentation. And stage 3A, you start seeing those new early bone formation, the woolly porous bone. And stage 3B, normally that bone look a bit more normal or denser, uh, more architecture, more like a normal bone. And obviously stage 4 is... Uh, uh, is normal. So this is Elizabethtown uh, modified classification and uh, uh, Benjamin Joseph has done significant research and added a lot of things to it and we will keep talking about his work because that's th that work is uh, is one of the uh, main thing which uh, nowadays uh, give us enough uh, evidence to manage these uh, conditions. So uh, from this slide, as uh, if you if you remember, this is quite important slide that whatever is pathology is happening, we have divided uh, that pathology into, into these four stages and uh, first three stages we have subdivided into two so that we can actually have a very good idea uh, what is happening inside with these clear-cut staging in our mind. So just remember this uh, stage, this will keep coming again and again.